my name is Lainey, in case you're new to the channel, and if you are new, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like this video, leave a comment, join my channel membership, which will hopefully soon be enacted, and all that fun stuff. Anyways, today is actually going to be a collab video with some fellow YouTubers, some fellow J Fashion Lolita YouTubers, and if you want to watch their videos, they are all going to be down below in the description box. There's going to be a playlist too if you want to watch the playlist and watch everybody's highly recommended. That's what I'm going to do. Or probably what I'm doing as this video is going live. So you do it too. We can be matching that way. Anyways, from the title you can tell that today's topic is how I got interested in Lolita fashion. Let's dive into it. We go back into the past. Years and years ago. Far, far into the past. I think I was, this is probably during, no, wait, before middle school. Probably before middle school. This is when our story begins. And I don't know why I remember this. I remember like really weird details about my childhood and this is one memory that's like crystal clear. But basically, if you guys know my freaking coolest cousin on the planet, Cass, He's in this story, but anyways, the two of us are like sitting on the on a couch in my house and he starts showing me all of these like frilly dresses and like talking about these frilly dresses and I don't think he mentioned what the name of them was at this point, but I remember seeing like, you know that one dress that's always replicated on Wish by Mary Magdalene? Did I pronounce that right? Probably not. But that dress was one of them and there are all these beautiful, elegant, cupcake shaped, just oh, so pretty dresses and we were just like scrolling through and looking at them sitting on the couch. So I, I saw these dresses and in the back of my head they were just like always there. I would be like going to try to find a dress for the school dance and it would come back in my mind and I would be like, Remember those really pretty dresses that Cash showed me? Then, then we start my Viaboo phase. My Viaboo phase starts in about fourth grade when I started watching Full Metal Panic, Full Metal Alchemist, all of the good stuff. And it kind of took a sharp, you know, hockey stick up, like whoop, full on Weeaboo. And I became obsessed with all things anime. I became like, uh oh, like very cringy 12 year old Weeaboo saying, like, That's who does, I don't know. And I became like so involved in the cosplay community, in this like community where you're so heavily into Japanese culture and like kind of like wanting to learn Japanese, listening to only Japanese music. It was really bad, it was really, really cringy. And that's when I finally stumbled across, again, Lolita fashion. And I remember going through, like, sitting in my mom's science classroom at like 7 in the morning waiting for school to start and I'm just like scrolling through all of these different Lolita websites and just trying to find dresses. But I was also way more into cosplay at this time so I never actually got any dresses because, you know, cosplay was consuming my life as you can tell from my channel up until like a year ago. So, <laughs> so anyways, then I start gaining like a few followers. I think I had like 2,000 Instagram followers or something. I had like an okay sum of followers and this is now 8th grade, I'm now like 14 and I was one of those people who was like a big weeb, but also like very... Look, you only have 500 followers? Well, I have 512. I was one of those people, it was really really bad and I thought I was like amazing. I thought I was untouchable. No modesty existed in this body and uh, it was really bad, really cringy. I can laugh about it now because now I'm in my 20s but like oh it was so bad. I cringe thinking about it but I used to uh, try to find companies who would do sponsorships because I was 14. I didn't have a debit card. I didn't have like a credit card, money, anything like that. I couldn't buy stuff online. So my only way to get stuff online was basically to do it for free or to buy like those dumb Visa cards, Visa gift cards that you can use to purchase stuff online. You like pay cash for them at Walgreens. Then it's like a fake credit card that you buy stuff online with. You know what I'm talking about. So my like one way to get stuff online, apart from having to wait 
until I got like good grades for the end of semester too, if you remember me talking about that. Anyways, I already talked about that part. I would try to get stuff for free online, super not proud of it, but also I was like a very, very uh, middle schooler. I was trying to get stuff for free and I would like email all of these companies with these pretty dresses and I always really wanted one of these pretty Lolita dresses. But I didn't really grasp what J fashion was. I just thought it was pretty dresses that you could use for cosplay. Like in my head, I was like, ah, yes, Lolita cosplay. They they go hand in hand, best friends. Yeah. Never got a sponsorship for any Lolita stuff because obviously I was not a Lolita. So, but I was like kind of obsessed at this point with these pretty dresses. But I was still more obsessed with cosplay. So it was like cosplay here, Lolita here, and then. Spur of the moment, we, we come to Anime Midwest, I think this is either 8th grade, yeah, I think it's in 8th grade, sometime after what I just told you, and there is a Lolita fashion show at this anime convention that I go to. And I was like, oh, they're looking for models, Woo! I'm gonna do that. Uh, so I submitted a portfolio, and I got accepted. During this anime convention, I was asked to be a model. It was actually the coolest experience of my life, and that was the pivotal moment for me of, oh my god, I really want one of these dresses. And I remember asking the designer who made my dress how much it was, and it, it was scary. It was scary expensive. I think it was $160 if I remember right, which like, in hindsight, not a lot of money for a Lolita dress. Like, especially an indie designer, not a lot of money at all. But my like 14 year old brain was like I was expecting this to be $15, what do you mean it's $160? No concept of price at that time, okay. Uh, but it was like a really cool experience. I got to model with my very best friend. But overall, really cool experience. You can see my cord here. Anyways, we're going to fast forward like six months now. So that took place during the summer. I was a, a model for this thingy. And now we're in the winter. And in the winter, there's another convention at that same convention center that the summer one was held at. This one's a lot smaller. And I'm going through the dealer's hall and I see a Lolita fashion booth. This is it, boys. I go through and all of a sudden, I see it. I see the dress that I modeled down that runaway. That's fate. If that dress hasn't had been sold, that was fate. That dress was meant to be mine. That is the sign of the Lolita gods raining down on me and saying, Hey kid, you need that dress in your life. That dress is going to open a gateway to your future self. That was so melodramatic. I'm so sorry. But anyways, I like started talking to the person. I'm like, Oh my god, like this is so the person at the booth actually called the designer and was like, hey, one of the one of the kiddos who modeled for you found the dress that they were modeling and just like, I just want to let you know, blah, 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 blah. But anyways, the designer like answered the phone and was like, oh, heck, it's Lainey. Yeah, give them a discount. So I got that dress at a Steel. I got that dress at a steal and I still feel bad about it because I should have paid that full price because that dress is an absolute masterpiece. Uh, if you if you already know what dress I'm talking about. But that was my first ever Lolita dress. And I am I never did it justice. I will put that out there right now. In my head I was still like cosplay Lolita. Moosh, moosh. Put them together, same thing. Not the same thing, obviously. Really, ugh. But uh, you can see me reacting to my first time ever wearing that dress in public and mixing it with cosplay. It's not good, but uh, <laughs> after that, like two years later, uh, I did this trip in Europe and while we were in Paris, I actually wanted, I desperately wanted to go to the Angelic Pretty store. Could not find the Angelic Pretty Paris store. I think for the time being it was closed down or something. But I did find the Baby the Starshine Bright store. And I went there. I was like, it was so cute, first of all. And I went in cosplay, which was ugh, ugh, hate my younger self. Go inside and there's all of these racks and it has like this pink storefront. It's so gorgeous. And then there's an Alice in the Pirates rack. And I'm going through and I stop because I see this dress and it is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, 
There are cats on it. It's like sky blue. There's gold detailing. It is so beautiful. So I go into the dressing room and I put it on and uh, it was really embarrassing because I didn't have a blouse and it was like an under bust cut. So you know all this stuff on top was not covered but the waist of it fit perfectly and the dress itself was just so beautiful that I actually got the dress and I also never did that one justice and now it's just sitting in my closet and I'm too scared to touch it because it's really expensive and at the time I didn't really know how expensive it was but I, uh, I wore it in Venice because after Paris we went to Venice I got some really cool photos in cosplay wearing it sorry I'm so sorry and uh, yeah and then ever since then it was kind of in the back of my mind and I started drifting away from cosplay and I would go to conventions and maybe I would bring one Lolita cord with me. One very poor Lolita cord. And then I fell in love with Bunny Herbology, which you all know that's like my, my dress. That is my territory. Twin it with me please. It's so cute. It's so cute and it's so perfect and it's everything I've ever wanted. And I was like obsessed for this dress for so so long. And I finally was able to purchase the dress and I think that was what actually opened the floodgates into my obsession with J fashion. Like owning that dress, this like beautiful piece that I never thought I would, it was just like, okay, I have this dress, now I need blouses, now I need shoes, now I need accessories and wigs and everything under the umbrella. Oh my god, wait, look at this dress. And that's when I started joining Facebook groups, I started meeting other Lolitas, I started uh, just like doing all of that. And it just became like this huge part of me, I guess, like all of these dresses that I would see and I would spend hours and hours and hours and hours researching. Oh, this is what a bell shape is. This is what an A-line is. This is what a JSK versus one piece. Like, I know those all are all very basic examples, but I was just spending all of my time looking at different dresses, building cords, looking at color theory and how to know what pair of shoes to get and what you should wear with this cord versus a, what you should wear with a gothic cord versus a hime cord versus a sweet cord. And I just, <laughs> I fell down the biggest rabbit hole and I have not gotten out and I'm not planning on getting out because looking like this makes me so ridiculously happy. So that was such a mess. That was a whole messy story, but I hope you enjoyed my super messy story about how I got started in Lolita. If you want to check out some more Lolitas telling their stories about how they got started, I promise they are a thousand times more interesting than mine, be sure to check them out because there is a whole playlist that we're creating that'll be linked down below. Uh, some of my friends are in it, so go support my friends and all the other Lolitas who I will soon convince to be my friends as well. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I will see you for our uh, next time, our next video, my next video, and uh, goodbye.